Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's do an example of how to calculate the viscosity in a simple experiment like this. Let's say we have some viscous liquid we put in a long tube. The length of the tube is one meter, at least the, the distance that the sphere has to fall through the liquid. The sphere has a radius of 0.5 centimeters, so 5 millimeters. Let's say that it took 10 seconds to reach the bottom, and the density of the sphere was 8 grams per cubic centimeter, so it looks like it's made out of metal, and the density of the liquid is 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. What would be the viscosity of this liquid? All right, the equation says that the viscosity is equal to difference of the density of the sphere minus the density of the liquid divided by the terminal velocity times 2 ninths the acceleration, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, 2 ninths the acceleration of the gravity times the radius squared. So that was the equation we, we found on the previous video. Now let's plug in the numbers and we have to convert of course to SI units, to standard units. And so this would be equal to the density of the sphere, if it's 8 grams per cubic centimeter, that's 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter, so we have 8,000, minus 1,200, divided by the terminal velocity. Well, now let's see here, it falls a meter in 10 seconds, so velocity is equal to distance divided by time, in this case that would be the height divided by time, and the height is 1 meter, and the time is 10 seconds, so that's equal to 0 0.1 meters per second, and that would go, uh, let's say, down in the denominator, so 0 0.1 times 2 ninths, the radius, now we have to convert the radius to meters, so 0.5 centimeters would be 0 0.005 meters, 0 0.005, and then finally we have the radius, oh, no, what I did here is I took the radius, I squared, I actually rearranged the order, didn't I? I took the radius first, and I have to multiply times 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, now with a calculator, what do we get? So we have 0 0.005 squared, I'll start, whoop, let me do it again, 0 0.005 squared, times 2, divided by 9, times 9.8, times the difference of those two would be 6,800, so times 6,800, and divide by 0 0.1. And so this is the result, mu would be equal to 3.7, that would be Pascal's, times seconds. All right, how does that compare to water 20 degrees centigrade? Remember, for water, it would be 0 0.001, so this is 3,700 times the viscosity of water. Now, let's see if the units come out. Density in the numerator, so let's look at the units. Density would be kilograms per cubic meters, and velocity is meters per second. And we multiply that times g, that's acceleration of the gravity, that would be meters per second squared, meters per second squared, and we could put that in the numerator, uh, times the radius squared, the radius of the meters, and we have to square that. All right, let's see what those units come out then. Uh, two then, so we have meters divided by seconds, meters divided by seconds squared, so this cancels out that and that. We have meters squared in the numerator and meters cubed in the denominator, so meters squared, and we have meters there. And so, let's see here, that leaves us with kilograms divided by meters times seconds. All right, doesn't it all look yet, look like what we end up with here yet, but hang with me. Pascal's is force divided by area. So somehow we have to convert from kilograms to force. Remember, a newton is equal to um, a kilograms meters per second squared. So if I want to replace kilograms by newtons, I have to put second square up here and meters down here. So I move second square up here and meters down here. And so I can write kilograms as newtons times second squared divided by meter. Let's do that. So this would be equal to second squared times newtons divided by meters squared times seconds. I think I'm almost there. Now notice that 
Uh, we have seconds here and seconds there, that simplifies. And newtons divided by square meters, that's force divided by area, that would be pascals. So that means we're left with pascals times seconds, and that's indeed the correct units for viscosity. So numerically, we got the correct answer, and we verified that units indeed are pascals times seconds. And that's how we can measure in the classroom or in the laboratory environment the viscosity of a liquid by just taking a small sphere, dropping it in there, It'll very quickly reach its terminal velocity as it goes down the liquid. We measure the time, we measure the distance that it falls, and we plug the numbers into that equation. And that's how we measure the viscosity.